for more on this, we have Errol Mendez, Professor of Constitutional and International Law at the University of Ottawa, joining us now. Professor Mendez, great to see you again. Could you help explain for us how authorities in Dubai can find logic in jailing a woman who in most other countries would be considered at the very least an alleged victim? What's really sad about this, uh, th this I incident is, if you like, an interpretation, and some would argue a misinterpretation of Islamic law. in particular of certain verses in the Quran, which really talks about adultery, where if, if, if a woman accuses a man of adultery, um, that they have to produce five witnesses or four witnesses, sorry. And somehow this has been turned into, if a woman is raped, she has to produce four witnesses. Now, I have to emphasize that this is not a orthodox view of Islamic law and unfortunately it's not the only time it's happened. It's happened in Pakistan, it's happened in Afghanistan, uh, there's a 13 year old woman in Somalia who was stoned to death even though she was gang raped. So I think what needs to happen here is for the rest of the world to basically say this is wrong under any interpretation of Islamic traditions, which it is not. There is nothing in the Quran which says that women have to produce four witnesses if they are alleging rape. So how has the international human rights community reacted to these laws? Well, not enough so far. I mean, just to give you one example, in January of this year, the UN Human Rights Council gave the United Emirates a clean bill of health in terms of human rights. And if this incident um, is allowed to go un unheeded, I think it'd be unfortunate for all the other women in other countries who face the same thing. So my recommendation is that countries, especially Norway, but certainly those countries who support Norway's position, such as Canada, should protest at the UN Human Rights Council. There's a special rapporteur who is tasked with fighting against uh, violence against women. She should take up this cause on behalf of the Norwegian woman, but also all, all the other women around the world who face this misinterpretation of Islamic traditions. I'm curious to know, Professor, how much do you think corporate influence affects rulings such as the one that you mentioned, uh, the United Arab Emirates, getting a clean bill of health in terms of human rights? Well, keep in mind that uh, the UAE has been more progressive than many other countries. As you know, uh, they installed Al Jazeera there, which uh, they claim is free to basically say whatever it wants. Uh, there have been some loosening up. Not enough. There's still pressure on journalists. There's still other human rights uh, issues. But in general, they have been more progressive. However, this is an example of where if there are certain traditions which are not basically recognized even by mainstream orthodox Islamic traditions, this could create problems in terms of human rights. And as I said, uh, in some respects, this incident has been brought to the world's attention because she's Norwegian and she's white, but there are other women who have suffered similar devastating uh, consequences because of this misinterpretation in many people's view of Islamic law and Islamic traditions. Errol Mendez, Professor of Constitutional and Inst International Law at the University of Ottawa. Professor Mendez, thanks a lot for speaking with us.